Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Gotta Change. Today, we're going to be talking about Candace Owens and how she mentions that some of these women out here, or at least the women she talked to, was possessed. All right, let's go ahead and get right to it. Let me make sure my camera's on. All right, let's do it. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I'm having an okay day. Not too cray cray. All right, let's get it. Standards, which brought us forth to the topic of what is being dubbed hoflation. A friend of mine, Paul Joseph Watson, has a YouTube channel, and he spoke about this concept of hoflation, ho plus inflation, where when your grandparents, or rather your grandfather was growing up, he had to do less work to find him a high-quality woman, a woman that wanted to stay in the home, a woman that dressed conservatively, a woman that wanted to raise the children, a woman who did not want to be out sleeping with tons of men or putting her naked body on the, oh, of course, then non-existent internet, right, wanting people to see her naked. Now he's saying men have to work harder to find those same women. So they call this concept hoflation. And you are seeing it in this environment as you speak to these women and they talk about how the money that they get is a justification for this lifestyle. And they speak down about men. They have this fundamental hatred of men or rather a lack of understanding of what a quality man even is and where to find him. So before we continue, okay, I always want to talk about that whole flation thing. I think it is a little bit tougher to find. And listen, man, it's not like I go, oh, I'm like, I'm trying to say that women inherently have become bad. But do I think society, a society, society and everything we have going on has had some change in what we see now? Yes. So we have two things going on. So we have women who now have the OnlyFans, which we knew. And people thought this was going to be a great thing. But we all, people who, you know, we've looked into this world. We've seen what these other websites have done. We've seen what Instagram was already doing to women. We knew OnlyFans was going to make things worse, especially for men, right? You're going to get men who are already addicts, probably looking at pornography. And now here's a way for them to not even have to escape the world. Because before, even though, you know, pornography is always going to be bad. It's just that when people looked at porn before, you couldn't interact with whoever you were seeing, even though, you know, a lot of those women weren't consenting in those videos. Nonetheless, you couldn't even interact with them. Now imagine you can interact with your porn star. And that's what started creating this whole issue of OnlyFans because it made it see it made it feel like men were getting the reward of sex without actually having to do anything, right? They'd pay five dollars and the girl would show her whatever, you know, show her legs open or something like that. And you feel like you're actually doing something. So you're literally going to work to make money to go pay some woman online that thousands of other men are already paying. And for most cases we know maybe just hundreds of men, right? And so you see some OnlyFans models blow up and they have a lot of money and they go become a rapper, become this or that. And then every woman thinks that they can do the same thing. So you got a bunch of women out here with a ton of OnlyFans. It's like so rare. And I'm not even kidding. Like it's so rare to go on somebody's Instagram. You see a woman who is somewhat conventionally attractive and for her not to have an OnlyFans. It's not even not normal. So what Candace was saying is it used to be much easier. You could go out and find a woman who doesn't want to get naked. You can still do that. But it just seems like it's less likely to happen these days because all it takes is for one woman to get in another woman's ear and be like, chirp, 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 you can make all this money on OnlyFans. Knowing that most of them will never make any money. A girl shows her butt cheeks, she's on OnlyFans, and it's all over, you know? And so, yes, the whole inflation has become insane. What's happening? Okay, moving on. <laughs> I have a whole lot to say, but I'm going to let her finish. I'm going to show you another clip from this conversation where that same young woman who I honestly felt like, and I never say this, that she was possessed by a demon. She really was. And she was growing frustrated in me remaining logical and explaining to her that obviously her career was going to follow her for the rest of her life. And she tried to, I guess, trigger me as she was explaining how she saves marriages. And she tried to trigger me by creating a what if scenario regarding my own husband. Take a listen to her. And I do want to go ahead and put a trigger warning on because you may have some kids in the background. This is not something for children to hear. She's really about to jump into her uh, brothel mindset, I would say. Take a listen. A lot I of the disagree. perversion that comes, if you are not going to be acceptant with your partner, if he comes to you and is like, hey, uh, I really like getting pegged. I want you to peg me. And you're like, ew, that's so disgusting. Like, I would. I want y'all to take a step before we continue. Watch this girl right here. I, 
I just really noticed this right here. I had already seen this clip before, but watch her reaction when she says pegging. Acceptant with your partner. If he comes to you and is like, hey, uh, I really like getting pegged. I want you to peg me. And you're like, see how she realizes how silly that is? Hey, she uh, laughs, I really like, like getting pegged. Serious. I want you to peg me. And you're like, ew, that's so dis- Immediately change her face. And look at the other two. Really girls. like getting pegged. I want you to peg me. And you're Even like- I'm kind of uncomfortable. This girl right here, I believe this girl right here is a uh, um, sex therapist. Um, it's either this girl or this girl, but I believe it's this girl right here who's a sex therapist who says that she would have sex with the women's husbands to make the marriage better. Like, hey, uh, I really like getting pegged. I want you to... But see, she can't handle it. This is the same girl that says she doesn't take the cross seriously. Same girl who says... Oh, I just wear the cross because I don't believe Jesus died up on there. I don't believe any of that. I just wear it because it's cute. Yeah, this is this is this is exactly what we're talking about. Uh, man, I just I got so much to say. Let me let them continue. Peg me, and you're like, ew, that's so disgusting. By the way, guys, speaking of uh, <laughs> I've got so much to say. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you got some stuff to say, put it down in the comments. Like I would never do that. You want me to eat your. I would never do that. Well, then, huh? okay, what are you going to do? Divorce hmm? him? Or I, what are you going to do? Realistically, I'm asking you, you an old... I'm asking... No, hold on. I really want to... I want to know. What are you going to do? That's well, your I husband. He's think, like, hey, babe. I think one of the things about marriage that's really beautiful is I know what my, my husband, before we got married, I think I, I know who but he is. But things change, and maybe he wants to start exploring. He yeah. wants to start doing what? Uh, so exploring. say... He wants so he rim. wants to start exploring, and he's like, oh my gosh, maybe I do want you to like eat, eat my and what? i, I kind of and i kind of want you to peg me like i'm kind of i kind of want <laughs> anal penetration from you because you're my wife and you're so beautiful and hot and we're married and we have kids together and i'm and i'm feeling a little bit kinky and i with you since we have this special marriage and bond mm. how would you feel if we could just try this out just this one time babe please i think it would probably indicate to me that my husband was involved in some perverse world whether it was through pornography that something else was okay. happening on the side because these aren't normal things that people just think of okay. when they wake up so like, what's hey, your next I'd move really like a strap-on dildo okay, right. well, so what's your next uh, move what's the ultimatum he's wait, gonna divorce me if wait, i don't so peg him so what's the next move crazy uh, i would think that that individual would probably need therapy and not the kind that you give Uh, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give my talks on it, and then I'll let Candace give hers on there. So let me let me say this, man. The first thing I thought when I first saw that clip was, if a boyfriend, you know, a man came to a wife and said, "I want to be pegged," the same thought that Candace is gonna have is the same thought I, that I would have. He's got to be looking at pornography. There is just no reason a man would just out of the blue wake up and say, I just want to be pegged. I want to do something perverse. I want to do something. She said, eat my ass. I mean, it's just so foolish. This is so goofy. And yeah, I have to agree. Like what would make possess a person to even say something like that to try to trigger you? Yeah. See, you see the people around them laughing, but even her herself, when she said, eat my ass and peg, she wasn't even laughing because it was a real world to her. She's a woman who works in a brothel. Okay, she's a woman who sees these kind of men come in when when pornography becomes a main part of your life. There's no there's no telling how it's going to come out. It may come out as pegging. It may come out and saying eat my ass. It may come out as saying um, I want to have sex with other women. It may come out and saying I may hey, hey I want I actually think I'm bisexual now. What? It's so crazy to me. Like I said, the older you get, the more, the less I find this stuff funny. You know, I, I just want to mention this as a side thing because I know some of you guys watch sports and some of you guys watch Undisputed and First Take and First Things First and all these other shows that I also enjoy. Um, there's a man named Richard Sherman, and he has been making the news because every time somebody says something like he could take a big one, he immediately says pause. It's like that kind of stuff right there is what's going on wrong with society i see this all the time in the gaming world and stuff like that hearing pause it's like richard sherman is within it i'm sure he's in his late 30s now and he's still having to say pause because we can't have a normal conversation and everybody thinks it's so funny but who thinks it's funny just children children and young men and it's the same way that this woman said pegging and a little girl next to her laugh it's the same little girl who can't even take the cross seriously i think we have too much of this everything's a joke in this world going on and you can tell nobody takes anything that seriously because later on you hear Candace mention 
when you see an ad today and you see a half naked woman, you don't even think twice about it. Back then, you would have thought twice about it. Somebody uh, is naked on a screen. You don't think twice about it these days because we have become so perverse. We have become so fallen, especially here in America. I can't speak for other places, but I know here especially where porn is so rabid throughout the places. And also in places like um, I, I, I only know about it because you... Um, you read about it with the whole Japan thing and the whole having just a women's uh, train. And you saw that one streamer, that you, that streamer who got on a woman's train and said, why is there only a woman's train? It's because in Japan, the pornography once again became so perverse that men were groping women every time they stepped on a uh, train. Over here, you can't go anywhere without people wanting to have sex in public. Exhibitionists, people do the disgusting things in public just to get shock value these days. I was watching a video the other day on TikTok of the uh, Muscle Mommy, if y'all have heard of her. She gets on there and just moans and groans, like sexually, just to get shocked. It's like nobody cares about taking anything seriously to the point where if we think that a man comes out and says that I want to have sex, I want to be pegged, I want to do something, I want to deep throat you now, we don't even take that seriously. It's something to laugh about and saying, saying, well, he's got some real issues going on. Yes, this man now needs therapy. And what they were trying to get Candace to do was say, oh, you would divorce him. That's the problem. See, men can't even have any sexual fantasies instead candace said that she would hope he gets therapy because that's what i would think too it's like these people don't want to believe in marriage she was wanting to say yes yeah, see exactly my point you would get divorced from him because that's how it is anybody who has any kind of kink any kind of fetish you got to immediately divorce them and i just don't understand why people want to make marriage such a joke to the point where the sex therapist that was sitting next to that woman also says she had sex with husbands to make the marriage better because the woman doesn't want to have sex anymore. She doesn't. She just wants to wash the dishes and take care of the kids, but she doesn't want to do sex. Nobody wants to sacrifice anything. It's a disgusting world we're starting to live in. And once again, this also brings up a lot to me because y'all know I am a recovering porn addict and I remember looking into all this stuff and how it was ruining my marriage and how it was making it hard for me. I'll let Candace continue what she was going to say. <clears throat> yeah, when I was saying not the kind that you gave, I was, part of, I was pointing to a woman that was in her 40s who said that she's a sex therapist and she sleeps with other uh, women's husbands and it actually helps their marriages. Yeah, so what was weird about that is suddenly it seemed like she was suffering from a demonic possession, like she was just a Chucky doll and she was just trying to say the most perverse thing that she could possibly say to trigger me. I didn't feel triggered by it. I felt disturbed that a 22-year-old was even coming up with this concept and I realized that her entire reality had been warped because she works in a brothel and she sees up to 10 clients per day. And you have to imagine that she thinks that this must represent what all men are like. She doesn't, it never occurred to her that actually she is seeing the most debased, pathetic men that are in this society today, right? The, she is seeing men that have drug addiction. She is seeing men that have sex addiction. She is seeing men that have gone so far into their perversions that they might actually be requesting this from her. It is not the average man that goes into a brothel. It is not the average happy, happily married man that has these perverse thoughts. And yet she thinks that it's the norm. Her and this other sex worker think that it's the norm and that therefore they are helping to save marriages because, well, it must be all men that want this. This is where society is going today and this is why I spend so much time talking about perversity, talking about pornography, talking about the ills, not just of graphic pornography, which her mind is utterly polluted by because it's a form of her every single day. It's, it's a facet of her every single day, but also the soft pornography that we have all become accustomed, accustomed to. The pornography that we see when we scroll Instagram and you have Instagram models with their butt cheeks and their chests out. This is the stuff that is desensitizing us, right? It is desensitizing all of us. We're all victims to it. I say this all the time. When I see an ad, I don't even flinch when I see a woman holding a purse and she's half naked because we have become accustomed to seeing it everywhere. And where is it leading to? Where it is, it is leading to women that are quite literally prostituting themselves in the internet because they know that they can make a quick buck. And you can do that. It's true. I think later on in the show after I left, one of them mentioned that they make half a million dollars per year. It's going to come at a cost, obviously. If you want to make half a million dollars and in your early 20s or in your late 20s, and then you're going to realize that nobody wants to marry you. Nobody wants to have children with you. Nobody respects you. 
for the rest of your life, right? The possibility that you might be alone, that's deeply, deeply saddening. And what's worse than this, by the way, is that all of these women, we talk about how faith is at the root of all of this, a lack of faith, atheism, which is hand in hand with narcissism, a focus on the self, what can I do for myself? But worst of all is that these women view faith as a form of perversion. Let's talk about this one girl on the far right. She was probably the angriest because I think she's now in her early 30s and she's thinking, okay, she has less time, she's got less prospects, and she can't really turn her life around. Listen to us question her, or rather the host question her about... Okay, this is the part where she talks about the cross, which I've already mentioned. Um, the young lady on the uh, very far left talks about how she wears the cross because she thinks it's cute. And then she argues that she doesn't believe that Jesus died on the cross anymore and she's blah, 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 blah. And, but she would never wear a Jewish thing. She would never wear the David star. She would obviously never wear her job. She would never do anything against any other religion on the planet except for Christianity because we wear crosses because we think it's cute. It's just an absolute joke, but you know you, that's how, how far some people fall. But let's go ahead and take a step back. She mentions softcore porn, right? Softcore that we see these days. I want to tell you what, and a, a shout out to the AO podcast who had brought this to me. If y'all haven't seen an interview, go check it out. But the AO podcast, right? He had mentioned to me when I had said that X had become, Twitter has been a cesspool of pornography for a very long time. And I said, it's just crazy the stuff you see on there. And he mentioned to me that Facebook does the same thing. And I did not know that. So I've been looking into Facebook. And if you just scroll Facebook normally, right, and go through their version of shorts, which I believe they call reels. If you go through their version of reels, there's so much, right? I see girls on there shaking their booty. I see girls on there dancing with their kids in a sexual way. I see couples talk. I saw a woman get on her knees and pretend that she was giving her man a blowjob. And that was just... It, that was in the Facebook reel. And it's like, this is supposed to be the most fam family friendliest place you can go to. And Facebook has once again turned into what every other site is going to become. It's like, no matter where you go, you're going to see this stuff over and over and over and over. It's just in our face. And like I said, nobody takes it seriously these days. We can't even talk to each other without having to say, pause. We can't even talk to each other without thinking, uh, when you see people who uh, play video games, right? When they see some girl pop up in there, they'll be like, oh man, she's so sexy. Oh man, she's so hot. Wow, look at her. She got the bajungas. It's just like, I get having fun and being entertaining, but at the same time, dude, it's just like, why don't we even take a second to try to teach young men? I'm not saying this. And I do think, no, I am going to say this. I do think it is a man's responsibility as the older he gets to help the youth a little bit. She goes again to talk about how atheism talks about how it is prideful. There's a lot of pride going on. That is the problem. We don't have any men even trying to teach the young men. We don't have any women trying to teach young women because what we have been taught in society today more and more and more, and they put it in this concept of self-love. Or you remember back in the day you ever heard, oh, how can you love? You can't love anybody unless you love yourself or you can't. You, the first thing you need to do is take care of yourself before you can take care of anyone else. It's the concept of if you're on an airplane, you, there's no way you can help somebody until you put on your airbag first. I get the concept. But what I think people have turned that into is they take every second of their life to make sure that they are perfect before they do anything. I was watching another man. I do a lot of watching, but I watched another video that was a, a woman was saying that the reason she was dating multiple guys at the same time is she couldn't settle or anything like this because she needed to find herself first. It's like, at what point in this world do you think about somebody else besides you? People will divorce people. People will break up with people. People will cheat on each other just because they think to themselves, I just haven't found myself. I need to go find myself. I need to find out who I am. You do not need to do that at every second of every day and become 100% you. Okay? This life, you will never be find out who you perfectly are. Okay? Everybody's trying to fill this empty void in their life and trying to make themselves complete without God or trying to make themselves complete with money, trying to make themselves complete with sex, trying to make themselves complete with drugs, alcohol. They try to make themselves complete with all this other stuff. And they only realize that they spend all this trying, trying to learn themselves. And next thing you know, they're going to wake up one day in their 
50, 60 years old and they realize they've wasted their entire life doing everything for themselves. Whether that means, even if they got a nice mansion, even if they got a nice house, they got all this stuff, but they're completely alone. They burned every bridge they could because every friend they had, they, they took them out. They turned their back on them because they're just like, you know what? I need to do this for myself. I need to do all this for myself. Nope. And that's when you get the people who are like, I don't want to have a family. I don't want to have kids. I want to go have, I want to, I want to be 40 years old. I want to have sex and I just want to do whatever. I want to get on birth control to where I never have to have children, get my tubes tied. And I want to be able to go get drunk at a Beyonce concert. It's just like, you don't want to have any sacrifice. You don't want to have to care for kids. You don't want to have to have some commitment to a spouse. You don't want to have no commitment to God. You don't want to have a commitment to anybody but yourself. And that's all that matters. And when you do this stuff, people, when you get so caught up in yourself, that's where it's so easy to get into this sexual perversion. Of course, you're going to have men who want to get pegged. Of course, you're going to have the men who want to satisfy every sexual thing. And I am being a little bit vulgar here, but I'm being honest. That's why you get so many men who want to watch um, fantasies of a girl being taken advantage of. That's why you hear so much about deep throating. That's why you hear so much about uh, men, um, climaxing on a girl's face and that's why you see all this stuff you want to get as gross as gross as possible they think this stuff is hot that's what everybody says it's so hot to have a guy slap me and choke me and almost kill me you know it's so hot to have a guy just treat me like dirt on the ground there are so many disgusting things that go off in pornography. It, it just baffled my mind that anybody would want to do this. And speaking of that, a lot of the women and a lot of the men you see in these porn videos that are saying they love this stuff, they don't love it, okay? If you've ever really looked into this and watched the behind the scenes and listened to these documentaries that talk about porn, I've seen women just flat out cry, cry, bawl, throw up, just disgusted with what they've done. But the video will make you seem like it's all right. If you haven't seen that one uh, interview with the girls when girls did porn, that that used to be a, a website. There's a woman who talks about there was times that it looked like she was having a great time in there. But what they didn't show you is that there was blood all over the sheets, that she was literally being tortured and all this stuff. But when you watch the video, well, what do you see? You think she's enjoying it. Or you think, and here's the sick thing, it's not that you just think that she's enjoying it. Even if she's not enjoying it, some men get off to that. Some men think in watching a woman cry and scream, it makes it more real. <sighs> you know, coming from the porn world myself and talking to many addicts, I've even uh, talked to one man who said that he was so deep in the point that he started cross-dressing until his wife found, found him cross-dressing. How deep down the hole can you go? And it gets, it's not, that's not even the worst thing that can happen. We've obviously heard of much worse things that have happened with porn addicts, but people think it's such a joke. And, I, and some men are starting to open their eyes. Some women are definitely have opened their eyes. Clearly women were talking about this much um, earlier than men were. But even men are starting to realize how disgusting they are, how disgusting they have been, and what the stuff they've done. They get We all get taught at a young age, when we're 13, 14, that sex is the most important thing. You need to lose your virginity as quick as possible. You're, if you don't lose your virginity, you're going to be this socially awkward freak. Y'all remember the 40-year-old version, right? It's the same concept. Ever since that movie came out, The 40-Year-Old Virgin, that's when I really saw it explode that being a virgin was something that no man should ever want to be. It's worse than death. I'm just hoping that one day, and we have to keep fighting. I don't, and let me say this, man. I really don't care how long it takes how much of an uphill battle it is to fight against porn. I don't care how long we got to talk about saying a woman shouldn't be naked. I don't care how many times I got to say I don't like OnlyFans. I don't care how many times somebody has to yell in my face, scream in my face, and say that it's women empowerment. I don't care. I hope you know that. Some of us in this world, we really don't care. We only care about truth. And we're going to protect women and children until the day we die. And we will easily die on this hill because that's what sacrifice is. That's what living for someone else is. And I'm not saying I'm a great person or I'm this good person. It's only the stuff that God has instilled in me. Okay? This is God caring about his children. This is God caring about his creation. This is God caring about women. And some of us just choose to listen. I'm hoping this woman and these women 
can find their way out of this sexual world because it is one of the biggest addictions out there, far beyond drug addiction. Okay, you're more, way more likely to find a drug addict before you find a heroin addict. You're more likely to find a porn addict before you find a cocaine addict. You're way li- more likely to find a drug, I mean a porn addict, before you're willing to find all of these addictions. That's all I have to say. Let me know what you think if you care. Are we making any difference in this world? I don't know. But we're going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying.